What's up, everybody? This is Incanti, and welcome to my latest creation, Point Zero. Point Zero is a max patch, so you need to have Cycling 74's max in order to run this, and you also need to install the externals Flucoma and HISS toolkit in order to get this to run properly. And worry not, all that stuff is free other than max, but the externals are free, and you can find the required external links right here in the info box. All right, so what does Point Zero do? This is inspired by Rob Clouth's software called Reconstructor, which was used on the album Zero Point. And this software was an uh, implementation of an algorithm created in 2015 to perform audio mosaicing. So the idea with audio mosaicing is you take a target and you recreate that target using segments of some kind of source. And in the original paper, Let It Be, we recreated Let It Be by the Beatles using the sounds of bees buzzing. So this is the original example. This is Let It Be by the Beatles. And this is the sound of bees buzzing. And in this original example, they, they took that short recording and they pitched it to a bunch of different pitches. So there's a lot of different pitches to work with in the corpus. And then the sound of Let It Be by the Beatles was recreated with bees buzzing in this result. Notice you can hear the chords, the individual notes that make the chords, and then you can even hear the melody when it comes in. So in point zero, we start with, well, let's start with the target. Uh, let's load up a sample that we want to recreate. And over here, I have uh, just a drum loop that I've made. I chose that because it has a really good stereo image and a lot of variation. So we're going to drag it onto target right there. It displays how long it is and the name of it. And as for the source, and this is what the target's going to be remade out of, we can either use an audio file or we can drag and drop a folder full of audio examples, otherwise known as a corpus. So here I have a folder called example corpus, and these are just some fully textural samples I've taken from walking around the neighborhood. Just some interesting sounds in there all recorded in stereo. And I'm just going to take that whole folder and drop it right here under source folder. And remember, you could just use a single audio file, but uh, when you drop a folder right here, it basically creates one audio file, one long buffer by gluing together all of those individual samples. So now we have a target and a source loaded up. Now we go down to part two. It says concatenate right here. Now this is an offline process, which means that you have to press go and then just wait for it to be done. Um, before I press go though, let's go over these settings because this is really going to define how the result is going to sound. Uh, we'll start with mid side or left and right. This determines how the stereo image is processed. With the toggle on, with mid side mode on, that means that the middle is going to be concatenated and then the side image is going to be concatenated. That's a good way of preserving kind of a strong center image. Uh, but let's go ahead and turn that off, and then you'll just get the left concatenated separately from the right. That normally gives you a wider stereo image. Then we go over here to polyphony. Now, this is essentially how many different sounds you're going to get to recreate any portion of the target. So this can be a wildly high number and get really interesting results. But if we bring this really low, then that means that at one, that means for any moment of this target, we are only picking one sound to represent that moment. And with a drum loop, it might be good to have one, maybe, maybe more. And you'll notice as you're scrolling through here, you can only get odd numbers because that helps it process easier for some reason. Then we go down to iterations. This has to do with the machine learning. Uh, machine learning is an iterative process where it gradually gets closer to what you want. You can think of it that way. And I've found that 
this really this number doesn't really need to be above 20 or 30 so just for this example we're going to bring it down to 20. then we get to fft settings this is essentially how large of a segment you are going to be analyzing the target and the source with so 124 refers to samples that means it's going to look at 124 samples at a time it's going to look at what's happening in the highs the mids the lows it's going to analyze all the way up the spectrum and then choose a portion of the source that matches that part of the target. This number, when it's a low number, it takes twice as long to do the process. Even lower, that's another twice as long. So 124 is a pretty good standard. And then continuity takes however long that is. That's frames, basically. This is the definition of one frame. And it says, okay, we're going to fade up to that frame. So however many frames that is, 124 samples times seven, that is how long the segment is going to be when it when it chooses a segment to superimpose over the target. Now, continuity, uh, lower number here, that means it's going to have like tighter little sounds. That means like you can get really glitchy with low continuity. I like to have the continuity up a little bit. And then we have time sparsity, which means, okay, after you've selected a portion of the source to match with the target, wait this many frames before choosing that same option again. So time sparsity basically creates more variation with more time sparsity that you do. Uh, when this is really low, you end up getting like kind of almost a buzz because it might, it might pick the same segment again and again so we like to have this at least up at seven or eight or nine or something but when you go into really high numbers then you're getting a lot of variation and now we go make a cup of tea after we press go once the processing is at 100 percent we can now audition the result so remember what the target sounds like. And remember what the source sounds like. And this is the result. Wow, that actually came out really good. Uh, this is the most important part. Remember to press right after you have finished this super cool sound. And then repeat the process to make a whole bunch of loops that you can then use in your DAW to make cool music with. I'm going to send you off with a couple of excerpts of some music that I have made using this technique. And I hope that you enjoy these super secret previews because this album won't be coming out until next year. Thank you for watching this little video. I'm going to be updating Point Zero and hopefully work out all the bugs eventually. And of course, Flucoma is a project that's always getting updated, so we might add features later on as well. But if there are any bugs, feel free to email me uh, at my email address provided inside of the README. And of course, remember to check out the links in the description to learn more about audio mosaicing and Rob Clouth's album Zero Point, and of course, all of the amazing. Um, contributors that went into making this with me. So uh, thank you so much and happy audio mosaicing.